Okay, so let's talk about personality. I think in a nutshell, I've been saying this for the past few episodes, and that is because personality is the biggest, you know, secret about having a successful art and spot running. When you go on GitHub, search on Fiverr, we have lots of people who sell traffic. Now, what they basically do is what you learned on phase one and phase two. They pick up random process servers, random user agents, and they just drive this whole traffic to your website. Now, it might actually look like you're having lots of use, but after a while, Google would remove this use, leaving you with almost nothing. It's more like when you buy fake Instagram followers. At the beginning, you bought 1,000 fake Instagram followers. It seems like you have a 1,000 Instagram followers. After a while, the followers start dropping. It's simply because as Instagram gets to understand that most of these profiles are fake, based on the fact they were just created of recent, they don't really have an activity, Instagram starts disabling those accounts. Now, what happens to you who bought the you know, fake followers, is your followers start decreasing. But if you have real human beings following you, you are likely going to have your followers reduced, except one of the people who follows you unfollows you. So what we're practically doing today is trying to create a real bot traffic. Now, we're not really doing this organically. We're trying to harvest this in the lab, which is with me and you. And I will tell you the easiest way to get done with this. So before I move straight into teaching you why we need personality, I would simply want to show you one of the biggest detection systems Google has and how to bypass the system. Now, the basic reason why I love teaching my students about the security procedures is so they can understand perfectly fine what they're doing and should security updates you know improve tomorrow they might be smart enough to figure it out without actually contacting me i can simply just open the code show you what i'm doing tell you to type this and but now the real fact is if years from now there's an improving security you'll be able to fix this yourself so me trying to explain exactly what google places or exactly how google verifies its traffic would help you to be not just more um, inclined on what you're doing but also more creative you could actually come up with more solutions more ways of maxing yourself or making your traffic look more real I'm going to go straight into my paint so I can show you a little diagram of how Google works now whenever a traffic comes in on your websites there are like two sections of AdSense you need to learn I'm going to draw this now the fourth section of the AdSense is the one you know and this is your dashboard now, this is the dashboard you see often, like whenever anybody clicks on um, a particular link or whenever anybody clicks on any advert on your website, when you have visitors, when there's engagement on your website, you know, you get to see this in real time. So we could just simply call this real time. Now, after this, we have another section, which is called the verification section. Now, Google doesn't just verify each particular click or visit immediately. It takes quite some time. Most times it takes as much as 24 hours. This is simply why at the beginning of today, you could actually use the bot and you have like, let's say, um, 4,000 views, right? Now, the next day you get to discover you have maybe 20 views. So you're wondering how come from 4,000, Google has deducted 3,880. It is simple. Google discovered that majority of the traffic were false and therefore they canceled 3,380, leaving you with 20. Now, they did not do this immediately, else you won't, you won't have seen 4,000. They did it after a while. So this simply means every single click, every single visit goes through a particular verification process. Now, this verification process, there are certain things that have been considered and this is what I would explain on this tutorial. Now, let us start with the most important one um, or the most important check. Now, before I got to this section of creating an undetectable bot, I had already seen lots of strand errors online and I'm one person who loves doing my due diligence. I love studying for what other people have done so I can see their strength and their weakness and try to wrap up why they couldn't succeed. I learned this when I was trying to create smart applications back in the days. I first of all look at other people's approach. What have they been doing? 
there are two ways of learning you could make the same mistake everybody's making or you could just watch their mistakes look at how their mistakes has been occurring and trying to figure out something different from what they've been doing that way you save yourself all the years of you know try and errors and you just go straight into something that is close to the solution if not the solution so one of the things i noticed was the fact that people were creating fingerprints that were not verified so i'm going to show you what i mean by fingerprint that were not verified now, whenever somebody visits a website, there are certain metadata that Google Analytics keeps. One of those things are your IP address. Now, if you've ever used Google Analytics or Google Overview or Google Corso to check the amount of people who visit your website to monitor your traffic, you're going to see that Google has this Google Corso section. On the Google Corso section, they get to show you people who have been visiting your website, what region they've been visiting it from, is it from Africa, is it from the US, is it from the Canada, is it from the UK. They show you the particular geographic area of your visitors. Now aside this, they also show you the devices people use. So aside IP address, they also show you the devices. Now the devices are things like the mobile phone they use, what brand of the mobile phone. You know, these are details of um, information Google gets to keep. Are they making use of a mobile device, a desktop computer, a laptop, a tablet, what kind of device? So Google also keeps track of the devices people use. The second thing they get to verify as well is what logged in section. Now login session simply means cookie. So aside your IP and your device will also have cookie. Now if you have noticed, Google is able to tell you people who are returning. Like Google is able to tell you returning visitors. So if somebody visits your website today and then they come back tomorrow, they come back next tomorrow, on your Google Analytics or your Google console, you'll be able to see that there is um, a certain amount of people who have been returning on your website. How does Google know who has been returning? Or how does Google know, you know a particular person that keeps on returning, from, um, returning back and back to your website? It is simply because of the cookie. Google is able to track anybody who is logged in on Google account. So if I have a Gmail account or if I have a YouTube account and I'm logged into my computer, if I visit your website, Google has some little metadata that they can use to track me. So if I visit your website today and I come tomorrow, Google will be able to know that I've returned you know, to your website tomorrow. There are also metadata that Google would also use to verify certain things, which is authenticity, authenticity of metadata. So let's say this is the primary things Google gets to look. Now we have other things Google would also check, but for now, let's call this the primary things Google look. Google looks at your IP address, which would obviously tell them your location. Google looks at the devices you're using, which they can get from your user agent. And then Google tries to check if you are logged in, which is your cookie. Now we can call this primary. Now in as much as Google has already gotten some primary data about you, there's still some secondary data. And these secondary data will be what would, you know, validate your primary data. So let's say for instance, Google wants to validate your location. Where are you really located? Now, one of the biggest mistakes most people would make is to just change their process server and they somehow think that solves it all. Now, for instance, I have a VPN right now on my computer. I think you must have seen this so many times. I use NordVPN. Now, however, I am a Nigerian and I'm currently in Nigeria. And my time right now in Nigeria is... Okay, it not, it's not showing this. Okay. Thank you. My time currently in Nigeria, you can see here, is 12.35 a.m. So this simply means this is 12.35 a.m. in Nigeria. Just really let you know a bit of how this works. I'm going to create a new tab and I'm going to check. I'm going to type in time. Now I've typed time, you're going to see 12.35, which is the same thing as 0.35. Sorry. Which is the same thing as 0.35. Now I'm also going to type my location now i've typed my location is going to check my current location which is not too accurate but it's, uh, it's close to accurate it's showing wusi abuja i'm actually at asokura abuja we can get to see it's showing abuja it's showing the closest it can to my location so it just does this from the ip and probably the ip address i'm currently using right now or the server is coming from Wusi, but now you can see it's showing Abuja. Now I want to show you something. I'm going to put on my Nord VPN. I still hope I've not signed out because sometimes I sign out from this VPNs because most times they're very, very um, 
sticky but I'm going to open my VPN and I'm going to use the United States right so I'm choosing United States right now and my VPN is going to change my location to the United States within few um, minutes I'm logged in I have an active node account right yeah I do okay because sometimes I forget to renew them okay it's currently showing I've connected to the US now I'm going to search for this my location again and this time around you should be able to see okay showing Nigeria and that is basically because it still has some metadata you no know, showing Nigeria so I would have to refresh this page totally um my location is still showing Nigeria I think I should have used my IP um okay let's go what is my IP location good it's showing me this IP address right I'm actually supposed to check more details on this so what I will do is to what is my IP location okay let us use this website what is my IP location preferably now it, if you if we use what is my IP location it's telling us we're currently at it's not giving me any location please hold on where we look for where it's going to tell us we're located this one is just giving us metadata I want to, okay this is it it's telling us where from or we are at Frankfurt okay so I really don't know where that is what I would simply just do is to try and see if I can you know pick up a precise um location so hold on um let's head over to the US and in the US I want us to look for a specific city let's use Chicago right and let's connect now I want us to precisely go to Chicago or use a Chicago IP address so what I'm about to teach you would stick in very well so within a few seconds my VPN should you know take us to the nearest server in Chicago and connect us there then I'll refresh this my location to confirm we're in Chicago so I'm going to hit refresh and when I do so, I'm expecting to see myself in Chicago because my IP address has changed to Chicago, which you can clearly see. Now, I would also want to go back here and type that same thing, my location on Google. Google is actually supposed to tell me what my location is. Yes, that is good. Fantastic. It's telling me Chicago. You can see it's Google actually thinks I'm on Chicago right now, right? And this feels like we have fooled Google, except for the fact that we only gave them a primary um, detail which is an IP address and this IP address currently right now is showing what is showing Chicago so this IP address is showing Chicago well now that is a problem now the problem is when it goes to the secondary section the secondary uh, metadata would validate the primary one and most of the time this is simply where Google knows something is wrong with you know your primary data like let's say for instance if one of the things you gave here doesn't match on the secondary section there would actually be a disparity that would cause issues doesn't really make sense I will explain within a few minutes now I want you to pay attention again remember our location what is it showing Chicago we just used Chicago IP address so it's showing Chicago now however I still want you to do something like I would always tell you to do what is the time so I'm still gonna type time now now you can clearly see that what is showing right now is time now 640 but this is actually giving you time from uh, what is it called again it's giving you time from this IP address so Google on Google normal surface gives you time from your IP address but well, this is not true I want us to go back to any website that analyzes metadata and you're going to see the real time we're using so there's a website that does that it's actually called tools.google I don't know if I still have it here okay this is it um, tools toolbox.googleapps.com so this is a website that analyzes your metadata within few seconds you're going to actually see how much um, of okay it's hold on let me get the precise link but if we really don't want to do it this way we could go back through the site we used not too long that was the site we used a um, few moments ago was this the site no, it wasn't this one. That was the site we used not too long. And that site gave us a couple of 
data. Ah, okay, I can't find it. But well, hold on, let me give you the most prefer. Okay, I think I we searched for what is my location IP, right? And this is it, IPlocation.net. I want to see if IPlocation.net can give you that metadata that I want to show you of. But if it doesn't give you, I will show you a link that will show you your direct metadata. The moment you're able to max your metadata, you're good to go. So let us scroll down. Let me see. Chicago, that is the IP. It's not showing us that thing. So let me show you that secret. The secrets to the metadata. So you'll be able to see precisely what Google sees on your traffic. So that way you'll be able to max it properly. The name of the site is um toolbox.google something something something. Yeah, this is it. So I'm just going to copy this link. Um right. It has a browser dot browser info. If you are part of the course, you should be able to get this on your GitHub repo. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to paste this link. So it's just basically that website we opened before, but browser info. Now guys, I want you to pay attention to something that has been destroying lots of bots. People's bots keep on crashing. Google Assets has been blocking people's accounts because of this little thing. And I'm going to show you every single thing Google does to verify. I'm, I'm increasing my brightness. Now I want you to see. What is the time? 12.42. The, okay, sorry, 12.43 right now, right? Now this is, let me refresh the page because this was when it's loaded. 12.43. This is 12.43. I want you to check here. 12.43. So precisely, my address is showing I'm in Chicago. Let me show you what my location is again. I'm going to come here and say my IP location. Okay, or my location. Let's just use my location. Google will use my location to get um, my time. Now it's showing you Elonis, which is, which is Chicago. Now if I now go to my location or my IP location or my IP location, I want to show you something. My IP location. Now I want you to see something. It's going to show you Chicago, right? And it's showing you Chicago because we're using Chicago IP. If you remember, this is it, right? Good, Chicago. That's what we connected to. If you screw down, it's showing you Chicago. The real truth is the time on my computer, which is the time zone. That's what we call time zone. Time zone simply sim um, simply means um, where you're currently located. So Nigeria, for instance, which is this part of Africa, is GMT one, right? Um, some countries they have like different time zone. Now, um, if you go to if I okay, it's showing you Chicago. If I come to Google and I type time now or just time, Google is going to be telling me it's 6 44 pm. But this is a lie. Google is actually trying to use my IP address that is coming from Chicago to calculate the time. But this is not what my browser is giving out. My browser is actually giving out the real location that I'm currently um, um, situated, which is. Um, Africa, which is Nigeria, which is GMT1 and not that of Chicago. So if I come here to this website, this is Google Admin Toolbox. This is where you see your real metadata. And you can see that, let me refresh the page, in as much as it's showing, showing Chicago, you'll be able to see that it is still showing here GMT1, which is currently 1245, which is the same thing as 1245. So this simply means when you use an IP address and you somehow think Google has been fooled, you have only been able to give them the wrong data on the primary section, but not on the secondary section. So what do you do? You make sure you match your time zone with your IP address. So let me give you what I mean by that. So for instance, you can see that my IP address is um, 17 blah blah blah, which basically just simply means Chicago. So if I, for instance, tell you or call me and type my IP, Google is still going to give us 17293. So this is basically our Chicago IP address, right? But in as much as it's showing Chicago, the time is showing Nigeria, West Africa, right? which is Nigeria, West Africa. So, um, time will be giving you Chicago time. Okay, sorry. Um, time will be giving you Chicago time because it's trying to use, okay, if I even type time zone, it will, let me see if it would, it would use our original time zone. I think it will use, okay, it's using Chicago time zone, which is minus five, GMT minus five. So, this is not what Google knows. Google knows our real 
time zone but they're using our IP address right now to just help us because people might be currently in Chicago and their phone might not be correct so Google just uses the IP address and say okay fine since you're in Chicago this is the correct time irrespective of whatever time zone your device is being set at now I'm going to go back here I'm going to refresh I want you to see that Google admin box can tell us our real time zone and this is what Google actually uses to verify I'm going to come here and I'm going to change I can actually change my time zone to something else if I want to I can actually do this I can go here um change my anything I change my time zone to okay I think I want to change my time zone um I just did and time mm, I want to change my time zone to be GMT okay this is West Africa right West Africa I want to change it to I can't see Chicago yet okay I want to change it to something like um Nairobi I'm going to change it to Nairobi right it has changed to Nairobi in Nairobi right now it's 2 47 a.m now if i come back here and i refresh guess what it's going to show you 2 47 a.m can you see it yes this is because anytime my computer any any time that is set on my computer it's actually been added like whenever a website opens um the google and um, the google not just google a javascript code can run to understand where your time is so google has this code on every website that verifies where you're really located so if you're telling them you're in us and your IP is showing US or your time zone is showing some other thing, you know, that will be a flaw. So I'm going to set this back to Africa, which is currently where I am. Um, I think this is the first phase where we'll get to talk about um, the things Google look out for. So how do we do that? We simply do this by trying to max our traffic, which if you see here on this, my bots I've already created, I have a section where I'm able to use Los Angeles or um africa lagos so i'm going to show you this on a later section but this particular section right now is just to walk you through so the next thing google verifies aside your ip address is your time zone so your time zone is what they would also use sorry is what they would also use to you know verify so let's put it here um time zone okay so um i'm making this course to be this particular section of the course to be free um, for anybody who wants to join the AdSense class, you can join the class. This is simply a bot. Um, sorry if you're part of the class already and you're seeing me talk about anybody who wants to join. That's because I'm going to be making this particular episode available on YouTube for anybody who wants to join my AdSense class to know how I've been able to bypass Google's verification and every single thing. So the remaining part of the tutorial obviously would be hidden only for people who are on the class. Now if you're asking questions on how this bot runs, it's very simple. Anybody who really knows um, how we run our code simply knows. All you need to do is to type node and bot. So this is for a YouTube channel. So you can type node and YouTube. I don't I think we have done some little configurations somewhere here. Okay, that is it. So it pops up depending on whatever we want it to open. Like now we we I allowed it to open this browser info, right? So it can show us uh, what is the code. But let me cancel this. I can make the bot to open anything. So for instance, if I want this bot to open um let's say renaps.com I could just simply make this bot open renaps.com and I could um on this section of the code I can unmute this and run YouTube but this is actually for um, a YouTube bot so if you want to join the class you can join the class I'm going to be making this particular section of the tutorial to be free so I'm going to let me separate this you can see it has open renaps here it has open renaps here and this is fair for car for and this is um maybe some other person so the way i create my bot like i said i make it look like a human being so after coding the bot i give the bot a name so whenever the bot opens any website it to identify itself hi i am favor i am this and i'm about to run so and so exploit and all that so on the next couple of episodes i would show you more and more on how to bypass any kind of security get a traffic bot that if it clicks on one thing you will not get banned you will not get ad limits and you won't have any form of issues so this is just the episode i'm making available um for the students who are already on the course I'm, I'm deeply sorry i'm doing this little jingle so the rest of the course just goes in so see you on episode two where we get to talk about the other secondary things we bypass yeah